I don't care how short you are, how young you are, get up that chimney. If we don't get those pigeons out of there, all hell's gonna break loose. I know you've been down the pit all day today, but come on, you know, kids half your age are working, you know, in, 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 hon, uh, ju just go and get your PS4 out, hon, come on, and get your friends round, have a sleepover, it's gonna be, have loads of fun, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll bake some cakes as well, don't you worry, forget about the chimney in the mines, for now. Hey folks. Kill man here, kill man at your service. Wearing the Bruce, as in Robert the Bruce, but the modern Bruce, not the ancient Bruce, because to get that, I have to remortgage the house. It is true. So, folks, here we are again. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, as you can tell by the sort of purpley, pinkish cast, those of you who've seen many of these videos will now know that, yes, Kilt Man is recording in the evening, where the light is not so spectacularly good, <laughs> which isn't the best for what we're going to do now, because, oh god, where's it gone? Where's it gone? I have a, a mask, so it's, a, it's, a, it's not an unboxing, because I've already unboxed it, but it's uh, it's... A pumpkin mask. Mmm. Let me go and show you. Oh, here we go. Ah, it's this. It's not a fucking pumpkin. Oh, fucking hell. Here we go. Here we go, folks. Look at this guy. Look at this spectacularly grim, gruesome, rather sadistically fucking nasty looking fella here. This is by Ghoulish Productions. I have a few masks from Ghoulish Productions. You've seen them. And if you haven't, go back and troll through some other videos. But there are some crackingly good masks. They do some magnificent sculpts and great designs. Now, this guy here is not from a movie. To my knowledge. No, he's not. He's not. Um, he is. He's called... Well, it says here... His name is Pump Pump Evil, Pump Evil. So Pump as in Pump in, with Evil at the end of it. That's not the best of names. I'll give you that. Pump Evil. Could have done better than that. I'll be honest. But I do love their sculptures. I love their masks. And I thought, and I saw it. I thought, hey up, hey up now. I like me some of that. I does. I'm gonna get me some of that to add in my pumpkin patch. My pumpkin mask patch. And uh, here we go. Pumpk Evil. Now, as you can quite clearly see there, look at his gob. Look at his mouth. Look at that more of teeth. And look at all these absolutely amazingly, uh, you know, sort of gruesome pumpkin seeds, which really do set the tone. And his cracked face, you know, like the the pumpkin where you carve the face on it. Don't worry, I'll, I, I will remove this. But just want to check there. There you go. Ghoulish Productions, yeah. And all the uh, the blurb on how to preserve your mask, what not to do whilst wearing your mask. You can do everything in a mask. In fact, most of the, the things you shouldn't do are probably best done in a mask. But yeah, look at this guy. Look at them. Look at them eyes. Now again, the lighting I apologise for, but take it from me, those eyes are quite searingly intense. They've got a lovely cast of um, red, orange, yellow. They're almost like inflamed and burning. We like you know this sort of devilish intent. He's got a wicked sense of humour. You can tell that grin on his face. He's got his. He's got the stalk on top of his head. He's got the. The knobbly, nodgly bits of a pumpkin. They've done. They have done another pumpkin in their range, and uh, that is why they regard it as one of the best, best masks that you can get. But this guy, well, it was in a sale. It was on Amazon, and it was like a clearance sale. But from Ghoulish Productions, 
and uh, got it dead cheap. <laughs> About 25 quid. Uh, so, you know, but this would normally retail at 60 to 70, and, uh, and you know, and it's worth it. Because look, look, look at what you've got here. Look at the detail on those teeth. That gob there. Now, what you may notice, now, this is one slight thing. Now, I obviously picked up on this when I first unboxed it. But you have one little rogue renegade seed, which is really hanging off. You know what it reminds me of? You know um, Griffin Dunn, who plays um, Jack Goodman in America, when in London. And he, David, he's David's mate, David's mate who gets killed by the werewolf at the start of the film and then comes back throughout various phases of the movie to warn David, you're going to become a monster when the moon's full. And the first time you see him when David's in hospital and he's having like trying to have his breakfast, it's good stuff, eat it up now, says the hospital porter. And then all of a sudden like he's dipping his bit of bread into his egg and uh, Griffin Dunn has his busy mate who has his throat and his guts ripped out of him, suddenly appears and he has this waggling piece of stringy latex flesh which everybody fixates on because it's so grotesque. And it's also an accident. Rick Baker, who made the movie and all the special effects, yes, I know, I've gone about this so many times before, but it, it's kind of worth repeating because of this, this little waggly seed here, which, you know, it, it kind of... I'm going to fix that because that's not right. I want that to be properly, you know, affixed. But I do like the way it reminded me of, you know, that little flap of trachea, that little flap of skin hanging over this exposed esophagus and trachea. <laughs> but the seeds are very convincing. You know, anyone of you guys who've sculpted a pumpkin for Halloween, yeah, you'll know that those, those great delights of getting your hand in there and having to scoop out because the little scoopy thing that you get the pumpkin carving kit no the shit in it really it is it is you need a knife to get your cut your, your details in and then <laughs> cut the eyes out the nose out the mouth oh god do whatever teeth design you're doing whatever you design this but you've got to get your hand in there at some point and get all them seeds and the the, the pulpy Pumpkin brain matter, get all that out and it goes into a bag and oh god. And if you're like me, you've got a husky dog, husky's very interested in these things. I and mean, I don't know if they're good for them or not, like, but you know, but she loves to get all the you know, a gob full of these. But yeah, so we have Gurdish Productions, Pumpk Evil. I hate that name. Pumpk Evil. Pumpk Evil, Pump Pump Pump. Evil. Just got an evil pumpkin. Christ almighty. But I love those eyes. I love the detail on his, his broken snout, his broken nose. The fangs are coming through this, this maw of teeth and they're festooned with these. It's almost like he's vomited out, you know, the pumpkin seeds. And I think that's quite a clever idea. It's just a lovely sort of uh, image, a lovely gruesome image. I'll give you that. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but the way that face is, it reminds me that sort of grimace, that uh, and sort of broken mouth, broken jaw, broken maw, reminds me of Evil Ash from Army of Darkness, the film that should always have been called The Medieval Dead. But when he comes back, when Evil Ash comes back from the grave, you know, and he, he wears the helmet and leads the army to the dead, you know, and he has this sort of broken. His face is broken and he has this sort of gaping, you know, crack and this evil leer. Well, that almost to me seems very similar. You know, if you stretch it out, you've got a proper pumpkin shape to it as well. But which would destroy the, uh, the evil ash <laughs> interpretation. But when you've got him normally, it does strike me as very similar. And that kind of, those blazing eyes as well. Let's get rid of this. Where's, where's that goddamn skiing do when you need it? Damn you, Mrs. Kiltman. Once again, you've removed the sharp, the sharp edge weapons from Kiltman. Eh, it doesn't matter, because just do it like that. That come off very easily. 
for that to... Well, should we wear him? Let's see what we get here. Let's have a little look inside. Any markings? Uh, well, that's doing my head in now, because... Over there, over yonder, is the, uh, the Trick or Treat's 1978 uh, Michael Myers mask. And I remember on my video, I was like really, really made up to discover that there was a little pumpkin stamp inside it. Like literally stamped inside it. And I went, wow! Now, go and watch that video, because I was pretty much made up with that. Any mask, you often get like a, a number, initials, a squiggle, a something. To, to mark each particular mask that comes off the mould. And we have something here, which bloody hell, and more, more appropriately, is a fucking pumpkin. Very similar to the one on a Michael Myers mask, by a different studio, a different production company. That's trick or treats. And yet, we have a very similar pumpkin. What's going on? A pumpkin's taking over the world. Maybe I shouldn't put this mask on. And what happened in Halloween 3? Oh yeah. I don't like spiders. I don't mind snakes, but... But there's no, um, there's no other markings, uh, other than like a bit of colour smearage from the paintwork. But, um, but yeah, and it says, like, B-3, but that's a pumpkin. So what's going on? They are two different production houses okay something going on there don't know what it is but let's go in let's dive into this pumpkin let's see what we find if I come up with a gob full of seeds now and pumpkin pulp mmm oh, I've, I've made a mess with my dessert. Mm, it's, it's all over my face. I want no jokes about facials, by the way. None at all. Look at that. Can you see the detail on the, um, you know, the skin of the pumpkin? You have these demonic, you know, sort of like, whoa, almost witchy. My brow type indentations, these blazing eyeballs, which you're not quite getting the um, the effect of because the lighting is not showing it too well. Oh look, look at Mr. Waggle, Mr. Waggly Seed. <laughs> you can see how the slits are just above here. Get your nose into this, and you can see how it pretty well. Yeah, pretty well, pretty well. Once again, it's it's quite a bit, a bit of a tight mask. You've got a bit of um, coverage down your your chest and your, your neck and throat. Uh, not much, not not much at the back. I'll be honest. <laughs> but with a suitable costume, I mean, this looks very zombified, doesn't it? Like an angry zombie. Very sort of um, if I because I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, EC Comics and Eerie Comics, you know, uh, and those sorts of Benny Wrightson sort of images as well, um, of, you know, really ferocious looking, angry, you know, but also quite heightened, highly stylized, you know, demons and undead cadavers and zombies and stuff like and uh, it's got that kind of look about it. I, I do like it a lot. All these seeds glisten, by the way, you, you probably can't make that out, but all the seeds glisten, almost like the real seeds themselves, because they're always covered in a bit of slime, aren't they, when you try and dig them out. And they've captured that really well. So look under the chin. You know, you, you, you've got... The way that the, the mouth is cracked open as well, that is like the carving of the big... You know, when you're carving the mouth on a pumpkin, your traditional pumpkin, you know, this is what you get. Kind of, it's a bit sort of like the Joker, uh, Heath Ledger from, you know, The Dark Knight. It's kind of, you know, it's got that kind of effect to it as well. So, you've got a few things wrapped into this. It's almost like quite a bit of uh, influence has gone into the, the, you know, the design of this 
particular creation. I'm going with uh, Evil Ash from Army of Darkness and the Joker. Uh, and there's also a slight hint of the um, the party zombie from Return of the Living Dead. It's just, like, the, the, it's just a skull and he comes up and he goes, <laughs> his eyes open wide and he just, he just wants to go, party! Because it's like, like oh, let's just, yeah! Now, if you do stretch that out, you get a very much more pumpkin-y feel, don't you? The dimensions, the size, the shape of it. So you could pad this out. You could, you could definitely make that more of a pumpkin sort of traditional shape if you wanted to. It, it, it's got the scope to do that. But you've got tons of like little details here, little texture, indentations, and sort of that fibrous sort of um, texture that pumpkins do have, it's captured that. And you've got this lovely stalk, you know, on it as well, like, like a little samurai top knot, a pumpkin samurai top knot. Yeah, I like it, I, I like it a lot. Um, last night I put this on the, um, the, the, the banister, you know, the, uh, the post at the end of the banisters, like coming down the stairs. And I left it there like that, sort of like a head on a stake. When I come down this morning, it had been removed, and I thought, who the hell, who has done this? I didn't have to look too far. My young daughter, killed daughter. I didn't like that, because I went to bed before them last night, because I was knackered. And uh, she come out the living room after watching the Liverpool game, yes! And then, uh, and she come out and she was confronted by that at, you know, at the base of the stairs. She was like, ah! Nipped it off and just lashed it away. No, I can't blame her for that that loose see that that when I open when I opened this, that's how it was. And that that's nothing to worry about. Just a bit of bit of glue on that and you you're back in back in business. But there is that kind of weird thing that maybe, you know, you, you kind of focus on it. It wouldn't last, of course. That's gonna come off, so I'm gonna have to doctor that. Oh, by the way, the music you're listening to is um, Terry Plumieri's um, greatly atmospheric score to, I think, 1988's film Scarecrows. Not a great film. It's about some robbers in planes who crash land in this sort of haunted, bloody domain, which is full of these weirdly bizarre scarecrows. And of course, these scarecrows aren't really just scarecrows, they're undead fucking zombies who will then attack these people for trespassing on their land. And uh, it's it's a great concept, and the makeup design for the, uh, the zombified scarecrows is great. And the score by the sadly uh, murdered Terry Plumieri, yeah, it's it's a homicide. Yeah, and I don't know if it's ever been... Um, actually solved but uh, but the guy was allegedly murdered yeah uh, not a not a well-known composer but he did a lot of uh, you know sort of background scores to you know you know uh, B movies horror movies I think he started off in a jazz band as well but if you listen to his score for scarecrows it's it's really evocative and creepy as hell and I love it because, you know, I couldn't really, in the vast library of um, Kilted soundtracks, I could not find a particularly suitable pumpkin soundtrack. Yes, there's Halloween, too obvious. Yes, there's, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington, yeah, 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 yeah. Too obvious again. Uh, a trick or treat, yeah, or trick or treat. Again, much too obvious. But this just seemed like kind of fitting. You know, scarecrows, pumpkins, they're all in the same sort of, same field, aren't they? So look at this guy again. He's slightly uh, out of shape, I'll, I'll give you that. He's a bit you know, mashed in, but that's a great mask. I have another mask arriving very soon. Uh, well, hopefully very soon. And uh, that one's going to blow you away. If that's... Uh, very definitely, if it turns up and it's okay, it's not been knackered in transit, it's one of the best masks um, produced. Oh yes. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll drop no more hints about that. 
And it's not even, you know, it's not even like a famous one, but if you're a mask aficionado, you know this is one of the modern mass produced masks, one of the best that's out there. But, you know, that's taking nothing away from this because this guy, Lou. I think this guy's outstanding. Look, look at his, look at his face. Look at those eyes. You're not getting the full effect. I, I appreciate that. And please, you know, you know, uh, you know, it's the way it is. My camera gear ain't the best in the world, but this mask is really, really effective. I'm loving the gaping stuff here. If you actually look closely, there's, it looks like there is pus or maybe pulp oozing out of the uh, the gash in its pulpy flesh. And you can see it around here as well. You know, it's kind of, oh, it's kind of, well, they're called ghoulish. Well, it certainly appears to be a little bit ghoulish, doesn't it? But I'm loving, I'm loving those eyes. They might, there might be a hint of slightly crossed, crossed eyes, slightly. It depends how fat your head is when you would put it on. Those eyes might stretch out a little bit, but at the moment, they kind of look, they're kind of going a bit inwards, aren't they? There's a bit of a, a bit of a cross-eyed quality, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in one eye, is it? And you've just got such great um, detail and contours and texture. And I'm just, I'm just, I just found something at the the, uh, the crux of the slit down the back of the neck. We know we to help me get the, the mask on. There's, it's either. It's very hard to say, and if I showed you, you wouldn't really understand. There's like, it looks like there's a pumpkin there with like flames coming off it, like it's another kind of emblem. It does look like that. And if that's the case, that's quite nice too. Um, or if it's just a bit of texture, which it looks, it looks too designed. Can you, I don't know if you can, can you see this too well? There's like a pumpkin there and it's like a, a sheet of flames coming off it to one angle, to one side. I don't know. Maybe someone out there from Goodish Productions can let me know. But guys, uh, I'm loving this mask. Loving it. The teeth have this sort of sickly, cancerous sort of sheen to them. It's like a yellowy effect. Oh. But those seeds, which do mimic that look a little bit, are shiny and glistening, and they've really, really captured that well. That is what those seeds look like. They look like they're slimy. And of course, they're not. You know, they're just, they're not. Of course they're not. But you, you're kind of like, oh, no. And it's that kind of, you almost expect that, that when you put your hand in that, you just carve the pumpkin out, you took the lid off it, and you trying to get all the guts out of it. And you're like, oh. <laughs> well, it really captures that. So folks, there's another, another mask for you to peruse and think about. Uh, if you take advantage of the little offer, which Goodish Productions are doing on um, Amazon at the moment, this guy, won't cost you that much. It's going to cost you about a third of what it would do normally. Yeah, yeah, ish. You know. So, but I'm not sure how many of them are left at that price. But it's definitely well worth it. You know, and for Halloween, you know, that'd be a great one just to put on your front lawn. You know, or put on the gate post. You know, just with the, your your other pumpkins as well. And this guy's there as well, sitting there amongst them all. It's almost like he's chowed down on the brains of another pumpkin, you know. So he is a zombie. He literally is a zombie pumpkin. He's going to eat other pumpkins, and he's got like the, their their seedy brains. Ah. In the film Alien, Ridley Scott's classic 1979 film Alien, uh, when Yaffa Kosso, who plays Parker, one of the chief engineers, he's trying to defend Lambert. Um, Veronica Cartwright from the alien who has suddenly appeared. This is towards the end of the movie. Lambert, get out of the way, get out of the way. And its tail flicks him and then it grabs him and he's got, and it's all like you know, sweat and stuff from the air, uh, you know, that, that hydro fucking pipes 
leaking on him and he's just covered in water coming down his face and the alien's gone you know it's it's inside mouth goes whoosh, like that hits him and takes his brains out well if you look at it being a guy that's got the photo novel the very famous and now rare for big big large size photo novel with all the film in full color images with the script alongside it absolute classic and of course on in the film the blu-ray you can obviously you know just you know freeze the frame when it scoops into his brain the effect is because it's clearly like a fucking pumpkin that they've used or pumpkin seeds to make brain matter because when it goes like that it's, it's just a split second shot what you get is tons of these things in that frame because that's what's come out of his head so you know there's a bit of alien there as well it's a goddamn alien pumpkin so folks there you go this is Pump Evil, the worst named mask I've ever encountered. One of the worst horror names I've ever encountered. Pump Evil. Or is it a silent K? So it's just Pum Evil. Either way, folks, it don't work. The name ain't scary, but the fucking face is. There he is. Yeah, look at them seeds. Look at the Mr. Waggle. Mr. Waggly Seed. Yeah, there he is. Right, folks. Plenty more to tell you, plenty more to do, plenty more for you guys to see. Um, coming up very soon. Uh, so, in the meantime, and the in-between time, please, guys, take it easy, have fun. Look after your fellow man, and uh, just be happy. Have fun, y'all. And if you can, just reach out and touch somebody. No, reach out and grab some good stuff. And then go like this. Hmm. And you'll find the world a far more agreeable place to be. Folks, as always, it's great talking to you. It's great that you spent the time, you know, to listen to my claptrap and um, see my goodies. But um, guys, we've broached the 300 subscriber barrier now and uh, I've had some great feedback from people. Um, please, can we, can we keep this momentum going? The more that we do this, the more people that, take, that come on board, the more things that I can show you, the more things that I can do. And uh, the more fun that we're going to have overall, and uh, and because that's end of the day, that's what it's all about, just to entertain you people. And I have a laugh, you have a laugh. What more could we ask for? Well, obviously, topless girls roller skating behind me, you know, and accidentally dropping cakes all over the place, having to bend over and pick them up. You know, you could have all that. Well, we could have, but I'm sure Mrs. Kilton would have something to say about that one, you know. But anyway, folks, keep it Celtic, keep it kilted, and I'm going to see you all in a pumpkin seeded. That thing is working now because Kiltman's hand is now pretty much repaired. Get in there! <laughs> Ha 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 ha!